Well, uh, congratulations to everything. You know, again, I, I sort of have a, a little personal connection with you because I go to the Telluride Film Festival every year. I love that film festival. I know Roger Derling uh, loves that film festival. And, and you were what they call the ringleader there every year. Yeah, yeah, the, the ringmaster. 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 Ring well, you're also Sox the ringleader. Center. Uh, but you're the ringmaster in all the in different venues, and you were at the Chuck Jones, and um, uh, and you would introduce all the movies that showed at Telluride uh, for years, and then this year, your movie came to Telluride, and it's one of those amazing stories where suddenly that movie just exploded, and 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 suddenly look at what's happened. It's yeah, I mean it was it was cool as hell, yeah. <laughs> So, how did Moonlight come about? It, it's based on an unproduced play? It was never produced, really, basically. Right? Yeah, it's an unproduced play by a playwright named Terrell Alvin McCraney, who is a MacArthur genius. And uh, <laughs> Terrell wrote this in 2003. He was applying to the Yale School of Drama, and he had to submit a writing sample. And so, he reached back and wrote this story uh, about the experiences he went through with his mom. And we grew up in the same time, went to some of the same schools, and both our moms struggled with this addiction. Uh, to crack cocaine that you see depicted by Naomi Harris uh, in the film. So he never produced it. He did get into Yale, and uh, it kind of sat there for 10 years. And I, the world is just very strange because uh, I think two months ago, Terrell Alvin McCraney, who wrote this piece to apply to Yale, is now the head of the playwriting program at the Yale School of Drama. Wow. And nominated for an Academy Award along with you. Yes, yeah, he is. I saw him walk up and accept his certificate yesterday at the Oscar nominees lunch. What a moment. Yeah, yeah. it was, uh, you know, sometimes, is this a dream I didn't even have, to be honest, growing up? I grew up like the kid in this film. Uh, so a dream I didn't even have is coming true, uh, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's such an interesting movie. And the clip we just showed here with the magnificent Naomi Harris, who was also nominated for an Oscar, uh, playing that role. That came, that part came out of your own life, as you just sort of indicated. Yeah, it's a combination of things that uh, I went through and Terrell went through. There isn't a single scene with Naomi in this film that didn't happen to either myself or Terrell. I gotta say, this is the, the worst moment for me to watch in this film. And it just happens to be the clip that we showed here in Santa Barbara. So, so I couldn't, the dudes backstage were worried about me. I couldn't even watch it. I was like doing this thing where I do this. Um, but, but yeah, those things happened. And uh, the, the beauty of making this film, I've always tried to keep my craft separate from my personal life. Uh, but there were certain elements of this where the craft had to blend with my personal life. And so the only reason Naomi is looking right at the audience in that scene is because we filmed it, you know, in OTS is very standard cinema language. And I felt you guys in the auditorium weren't feeling what I felt living that moment. And so we had to have her look directly into the lens at 48 frames to separate the audio from the picture in order for you guys to experience the, dis the dissonance, you know, the, the sort of disorientation that a young man feels, that any family member feels when they see someone slipping away from them uh, right before their eyes.